Presidential Decree 1602 as amended by Republic Act 9287, the Philippine Gambling Laws. Gambling is legal in the Philippines when it is licensed and regulated. In 1975, then-President Ferdinand Marcos wrote into Law Decree No. 1067-A that defined legal gambling and created the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PAGCOR, to license and regulate the industry. PAGCOR disburses the revenue obtained from these sources to other governmental branches. Philippine gambling laws were initially set up to govern the casinos and protect the players. Over the years, amendments have been added and retracted to fine-tune the gambling industry in the Philippines. PD-1602 imposed penalties in 1978 for individuals taking part in illegal gambling activities. This law is imposed since there is a need to increase their penalties to make them more effective in combating the social menace that dissipates our people's energy and resources. More than two decades later, RA 9287 is enacted in 2004, increasing the penalties for illegal numbers games and amending certain provisions of Presidential Decree 1602. It also establishes the Anti-Illegal Gambling Board, or AGB. The law is enacted to adopt more stringent measures to stop and eradicate the existence of illegal number games in any part of the country. These games include illegal number games, Weteng, Mashal, and Last Two. Section 3 provides for the penalties which are as follows. A. If the person acts as a bettor, he shall have the penalty of imprisonment from 30 days to 90 days. B. If the person acts as a personal or staff of an illegal number game operation, he shall have a penalty of imprisonment from 6 years and 1 day to 8 years. The same penalty shall likewise be imposed to any person who allows his vehicle, house, building or land to be used in the operation of the illegal number games. C. If the person acts as a collector or agent, he shall have the penalty of imprisonment from 8 years and 1 day to 10 years. D. If the person acts as a coordinator, controller or supervisor, he shall have a penalty of imprisonment from 10 years and 1 day to 12 years. E. If the person acts as a maintainer, manager, or operator, he shall have the penalty of imprisonment from 12 years and 1 day to 14 years. F. If the person acts as a financier or capitalist, he shall have the penalty of imprisonment from 14 years and 1 day to 16 years. G. If the person acts as a protector or cuddler, he shall have a penalty of imprisonment from 16 years and 1 day to 20 years. If any of these persons mentioned happens to be a government employee or a public official, the penalty shall be 12 years and 1 day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 3 million to 5 million pesos and perpetual absolute disqualification from public office. Also, the accessory penalty of perpetual disqualification from public office shall be imposed upon any local government official who, having knowledge that such illegal operation takes place, fails to abate or to take action or tolerates the same. If any law enforcer fails to apprehend perpetrators, he shall suffer an administrative penalty of suspension or dismissal. The penalty next higher in the degree of what is provided in the Act shall be imposed upon a recidivist who commits any of the offenses of the said Act. However, 
anyone who serves as a witness for the government or provides evidence, either voluntarily or by virtue of subpoena, shall be immune from any criminal prosecution. The possession of any gambling paraphernalia and other materials used in the illegal numbers game operation shall be deemed prima facie evidence of any offense covered in this act. While the case is ongoing, no property or income used or derived which may have been confiscated and forfeited shall be disposed of, alienated, or transferred, and no bond shall be admitted for the release of the thing. And upon conviction, all the proceeds, gambling paraphernalia, and other instruments of the crime, including any real or personal property used in any illegal numbers game operation, shall be confiscated and forfeited in favor of the state. Those persons who shall provide material information, whether testimonial or documentary, shall be under the Witness Protection Program pursuant to Republic Act No. 6981. As for the informers who shall disclose information about said crimes which may lead to the arrest and final conviction of the offender, may be rewarded a certain percentage of the cash money or articles of value confiscated or forfeited in favor of the government. The DILG, the NAPOCOM, and the DOJ shall provide for a system of rewards and incentives for law enforcement officers and for local government officials for the effective implementation of this act. It is the policy of the state to promote a just and dynamic social order that will ensure the prosperity and independence of the nation and free the people from poverty through policies that provide adequate social services, promote full employment, a rising standard of living, and an improved quality of life for all. Thank you.